Hello everyone and welcome again. Today we'll be talking about the energy module of a year 11 chemistry course and in particular we'll be talking about bonding in carbon compounds. So in today's lesson bonding in carbon compounds is our focus and as you can see here this is the one of the more impressive carbon compound um, structures that we can see and it's a diamond which is simply just carbons bonded to one another in a network structure. So in inorganic compounds, each carbon atom always makes four bonds. So remember that when we have carbon, which is in group four, it has four valence electrons, which means that it can create up to four bonds. So because it's in group four, it has four valence electrons, meaning all are involved in the bonding in some way. Okay. So the valence shell electron repulsion theory correctly predicts that there's a 109.5 degree angle between bonds and that forms a tetrahedral shape. So when you have carbon bonded to four other chemicals, it will tend to form a tetrahedron due to this VSEPR theory. Okay. Now all that means is that when it's in a tetrahedral shape, the repulsion effects from each of the electrons is minimized because of this um, theory. Now, carbon compounds or carbon atoms can form chains of, up, of unlimited length. So you can have a very simple short chain, like this two carbon chain here, or you can have chains up to millions of carbons long, like in plastics. Now, carbons can also bond with other elements. So hydrogen is a particularly important one for industry. So fuels are all hydrocarbons. So hydrogen and carbon just bonded together in different lengths of chains. Um, Plastics are mostly hydro, hydrogen and carbon as well, as well as oils and various other industrial chemi uh, chemicals, which form the basis. So these hydrocarbons basically form the basis of our scientific um, chemistry at this point. For our in biology, nitrogen and carbon form um, compounds like proteins, as well as DNA, and so they're very important for our um, functioning of our bodies as well as other organisms. Now, because it can bond with itself to form very long chains, or it can bond with hydrogen, nitrogen, as well as inorganic compounds, um, this creates a very large variety of compounds that you can form using carbon. Now, some important properties of carbon include that it has four valence electrons, so we've speak, spoken about that just then. And it can form single, double, or triple bonds. Okay, so this is what this diagram on the top is for. So on the left-hand side, you can see a single carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond, and it's, this particular chemical is called ethane. And you can see that there's only one bond between any two atoms. So for this middle one, which is called ethene, so this chemical is called ethene, you can see that there's two bonds here between the carbons, and the rest are single bonds. And here we have ethine, this chemical here, and you can see that it has three bonds, with, between the carbons and one bond between each hydrogen. Okay? So you can form up to three bonds. You can also form chains and rings. So for instance, the sugar molecule, the sugar that we're familiar with, that we eat, glucose, forms sort of like a hexagon structure, which we call a ring. Or you can form very long chains like um, octane or other um, hydrocarbons, which you can have in a long chain. Now, these um, rings and chains can be branched or unbranched. And by branched, I mean if we start the chain like this, an unbranched chain would just be a straight line, whereas a branched chain would have offshoots of carbon chains coming off the main branch, so to speak. So this is what we call a branch structure. And just the one line is a non-branched structure, or an unbranched structure. And it can form covalent bonds with other non-metals. Okay? So it can form covalent bonds between any other non-metal. So carbon to carbon single bonds. So single covalent bonds are arranged tetrahedrally. So we mentioned that already because of that VSEPR. So that, that can form a tetrahedral shape. And the bond angle is about 109.5 degrees. So the simplest example of a carbon-to-carbon -carbon bond, single bond, is ethane, 
of course, there is a simpler single bond, which is just methane, which looks like this. So there's one carbon with only single bonds. But the simplest example of a carbon to carbon single bond is methane. And the length of the bond is about 0.154 nanometers, a very, very small structure, less than one nanometer. Now, carbon to carbon triple, uh, double bonds, the simple example is ethene, which is this molecule here. Double bond between the two carbon atoms, as you can see. So there's one, two bonds, the lines representing one bond, and single bonds between the remaining atoms. Okay? So in this case, the hydrogens, but if the chain is longer, could be carbons as well. So it forms a plane arrangement or a planar arrangement. So in other words, it's flat and it's not tetrahedral. So a tetrahedral would be kind of like a, a 3D shape, but this would be a flat um, planar structure. And the bond angle is about 120 degrees. The bond length, as you'll note, is actually shorter than the single to single, uh, the single bond, or the carbon to carbon single bond, at 130, 0.134 nanometers. Carbon to carbon triple bonds. Um, the simple example is ethyne, which is this guy here. And it's got one, two, three, triple, uh, one, three, two, three bonds, where each line represents one bond. Of course, the triple bond is between the two carbon atoms. And the single bond exists between whatever atoms are left over. And this forms a linear arrangement. So where you saw before it was a planar structure, like that took up some two-dimensional space. This is linear, so it only takes up, you know, sort of in one direction. It only takes up a straight line worth of space. So it's considered a linear arrangement. And the bond angle, if it's linear, of course, must mean it's 180 degrees. And the bond length is even shorter at 0.120 nanometers. So, so you can see as the number of bonds starts to increase, the bond length starts to decrease as well. So that's just a quick summary of the shapes. So we have single bonds. Number of shared pairs of electrons is one, so one shared pair. And the bond angle is 109, and it forms tetrahedral shapes. For double, we have two pairs, 120 degree bond angle, and a planar structure. And triple, we have three pairs shared, so three here, a 180 degree bond angle, and a linear structure. Okay. So if that makes sense, we'll move on. So as you can see here, as more covalent bonds are formed, the bond length decreases. So as you can see, as we go this way, so from single down to double, down to triple, the bond length is decreasing. And as more covalent bonds are formed, the bond strength increases. So as you can see, the bond energy is higher as we go downwards, which means the bond strength must also increase. Okay. And it's almost three times as much in this case compared to this one. So you can see that it does vary. It seems almost linear the more bonds you have. So if you have twice as many bonds, you have twice the strength, almost. But there are, of course, some variation there. Okay. So that concludes the theory on carbon bonding. And so we've talked about how carbon bonds to other chemicals. and um, what are the main ways the carbon uh, bonds to itself as well as other chemicals? And what are the shapes and bond angles associated with that? So we'll move on to the question segment. So what type of carbon-carbon bond does ethyne have? So ethyne, we have to look back and think what ethyne actually is. And so it's not a single bond because a single bond would be ethane. It's not a double bond because a double bond would be ethene. Quadruple bonds don't really exist in carbon, or if they do, they're very, very unstable. So it must be a triple bond. So ethyne relates to a triple bond between carbons. For ethene, the VSEPR will predict its shape to be linear. So linear well, is remembering for triple bonds, so it's not this one. Triangular pyramid, py pyramidal, sorry. So Again, we didn't even come across this in today's lesson, so I don't think it's going to be that one. Tetrahedral, so remembering that tetrahedral is for um, 
it's for single bond structures only, so it's not tetrahedral. So the answer is planar. Okay, so it forms that plane structure within each when you have ethene type chemicals. Okay, so draw the structural formula for ethene. Okay, so remember, eth always means two carbons, so we have two carbons there. Okay, the ene represents a double bond between the carbons, so we have a double bond. Now the remaining part is simply just to fill in the hydrogens so that each carbon has four bonds in total. And as you can see, there's one, two, three, four car bonds around each carbon. Okay. Now draw the Lewis dot structure for ethene. So the same thing applies. We look at F first, which means two. So we start with two carbons. Then ene is double bond. So we put a double bond there, where the, that means that there's four electrons. And then we just fill in the remaining hydrogens. Okay. So what trend occurs as you increase the number of carbon to carbon bonds? So remembering this is the last thing that we covered. There's not so as you increase the number of carbon to carbon bonds, we get certain effects. So when we increase them, the bond length decreases. So remember the bond length kind of contracts a little bit. And as you increase the number of carbon to carbon bonds, the strength of the bonds increases. So when there's more bonds, for some reason the strength also increases as well. Okay. Now describe the properties of the carbon atom that allow it to form such a large variety of compounds. So remembering that we always look at the verb and see what it's trying to tell us about the question. So carbon is in the group four, so it has four valence electrons, allowing it to form four covalent bonds. Okay? So that's the first thing that we need to note about carbon. Carbon can form single, double, or triple bonds with other atoms, increasing the variety of compounds with the same elements. So you could have lots of different combinations of the same, of the same set of elements, but because of this single, double, and triple bonding, um, we can have all sorts of different arrangements, which means that and each arrangement has different properties, so we have different compounds. Okay. For example, ethane, ethene, and ethine only contain carbon and, hyd and hydrogen, but are distinctly different molecules. So they act very differently to one another because of their different structure. Okay. And carbon can form chains and rings, giving diversity in the compounds. So chain structures compared to ring structures have different properties, and so by having, different, um, by having different shapes, you get distinctly different um, properties among each set of chemicals, so you get even more diversity just because of the shape. And these chains and rings can also be branched or not branched. So branched structures and not branched structures also have different properties. So again, increasing the variety of compounds that we have. Finally, carbon can form covalent bonds with many other nonmetals greatly increasing its diversity. So it can bond with other chemicals like nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. All of these chemicals can be bonded to carbon, which again increases the number of compounds you can get from, um, carb from carbon as a base point. Okay, so that concludes today's lesson on bonding in carbon. So we've learned about why carbon can bond to so many different things, why we get a variety of chemicals, and what are the typical ways that carbon will bond to itself as well as other chemicals. So in the next lesson we'll talk about um, bonding in carbon as well as hydrocarbon chemistry and organic chemistry. So I look forward to seeing you at the next lesson.